Hello everyone! Surprise! I am in Paris, so I was also not expecting that I was going to be in Paris. If you were catching up on my Instagram, you'll know that I found out about this trip literally, or I booked this literally a day and a half before I got to Paris. So essentially, the reason why I'm in Paris is because I am trying to make my way back to Toronto, and because there are only currently three direct flights, I believe. There's probably more, but like based on my current research, there's only Paris, London, and Amsterdam. Since I came from Amsterdam, I didn't want to fly to Amsterdam again and then fly from Amsterdam back home. The other one was London, but London is super strict right now with COVID restrictions, so I didn't want to chance it and not get in. And then finally, it's Paris, so I decided to stay here a couple of days and catch the one-way flight back to Toronto. So I'm in Paris. I've already gone out today. I tried bringing the camera with me, which I actually did but unfortunately the battery ran out so I could not vlog however I did want to show you that I did go to Pierre Hermé and I got some macarons which I will show you I'm just back here because my phone is dead and I bought so much stuff it was getting really heavy I just wanted to come back to my hotel and drop it off I also bought um, this croissant from Cedric Groletto I don't, I don't, I'm not pronouncing this correctly, so I'm gonna definitely um, leave this below. Apparently, according to my new friend, Jason, if you guys did not know about this, I met Jason when I was in Ibiza, and basically, he's a very famous pastry chef. He's gonna be humble at this, but you know what? I don't have to be humble on behalf of him, so he's a really famous pastry chef. He told me that this guy's actually the most popular pastry chef ever. I'm really excited to try this croissant. In addition to this Paris vlog, I am actually going to be doing a croissant tour as well on top of this Paris vlog. So you guys will be able to see me check out the best croissants in Paris. I might do this within the span of three days. So you'll see me trying to go on the tour and I'll have a day dedicated to it. Since I already got this one, I'm not going to go back. So I'm going to do the try on, I guess, like croissant for this one in this video. And then I will also keep the footage and put it in the croissant video. But anyway, let us check out my little haul, my pastry haul. First up, we have this croissant. I also want to say that the packaging for this croissant is absolutely phenomenal because usually the way that in Canada they give croissants is just like the flat paper bags, which is so dumb because A, the croissant obviously comes in full contact with the bag and it gets super oily. It also squishes the croissant extremely flat. It's just not a good packaging for croissants. The entire packaging at this person's, um, bakery cedric's bakery is just absolutely phenomenal i have never been so impressed with anyone's like pastry packaging but also even their individual bags like look at how structured this bag is so the croissant is still so fluffy i've been walking around with this croissant all day literally went to every single fashion house with this croissant and did some shopping if you guys can even see i don't want to get it on my bed if you guys can see it's even like silver at the bottom and like this croissant is still in absolutely perfect shape there's no oil stains on this packaging 10 out of 10 okay i'm gonna try the croissant now and let you guys know how it is whoa okay internally it's very fluffy i think i'm gonna have to go back because it's not that fresh anymore so i don't know mm. I really like the inside of this croissant, but not really the outside. So, I don't know. I'm a little disappointed, to be honest. Next up, we have the macarons. I just told the girl to pick four for me, so this is what we have. I believe this one is like lychee something. I have a passion fruit one in here. Obviously, if you guys have been following the vlog, you'll know that I'm obsessed with passion fruit. So I'm just gonna take a bite off of each macaron to show you guys. Oh my god. There's also raspberry in this. Guys, I'm so happy. I'm gonna cry. Take in that I've traveled alone and I've never been happier. <laughs> Am I a loser? Do I need a husband? Next one. Actually, I can't even stop eating this one. I'm just gonna eat it. Oh my god, is this what love feels like? Hey, next one. I, I can't remember what this was, so I'm just gonna try it. It's like vanilla 
and she tried telling me what it was but like i couldn't really understand from her accent and like slash i don't even know if she was saying it right so whatever i don't know what this is but it's amazing it's so soft like it just melts and like in your mouth oh my god okay i'm gonna try the next one because i feel like if i actually eat every single one we're gonna be here for a while oh my god do i need to be alone with this <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> oh my god this is so good uh, me and these macarons need to get a room actually we're in a room we just need to be alone Oh my god, god, this is so good. Once again, I did not go to Lotteray because there's Lotteray in Canada now. So I'm going to go to Pierre Hermé. And also, Pierre Hermé, in me and actually my friend's opinion, we think it's a little bit better than Lotteray, but whatever. Lottery is just obviously more well-known, more popular because of its aesthetic. When you're in Paris, I'm always at Hermé. So I'm gonna show you guys what I do next today. I didn't do too much except literally shop the whole day. I'm trying to buy my mom a wallet. I'm most likely going to get it from Louis Vuitton. So I was in LV for a while. I was also trying to get a Chanel bag. I've been searching for this bag forever. So I don't know if I'm going to get it this trip or not. I feel like if this bag is suddenly available and it's not out of stock for some stroke of luck, then I am not responsible for any decisions I make after that. But anyway, so there's that. And then I just literally went to like almost every store and I'm going to take you guys with me this time because my camera is finally um, charged. Yeah, I can't wait to show you guys Paris. Good morning, everyone. It is another day in Paris and today we are doing our croissant tour. So the very first stop is this cafe right here. Hitting up all the major croissant stores today as per people's recommendations. I did find two different articles online, so I am following those recommendations as well as some that I found on Google myself. And we're gonna see how many we can hit. I'm gonna be really full today, but whatever. This one is super close to my hotel, so we're gonna start off with this one. This one was also recommended. Yeah, I'm really excited. All right, we have our very first croissant right here. And I got a espresso. Okay, I've decided to eat it on the go because we have so many places to go today. So I am just gonna walk and um, I decided to get a chocolate croissant because I don't think they had a regular croissant left. They didn't have almond croissants as well, which you guys know is my favorite. So I'm gonna try out this one right now. Oh my God. This one is so good. If you guys have seen my other croissant video, you'll know that I don't actually like the super burnt top. This one is perfect for me. Yesterday's croissant just was not it for me. This one is absolutely perfect. Okay, so I'm taking a break between the croissant tour to actually have lunch. I'm at this restaurant called Boulot. Boulot, Boulot. It's spelled B-U-L-O-T, but I believe the T is silent, don't quote me. My limited French is telling me it's silent. It's actually a seafood restaurant and I am so excited because I've been wanting to come here for a very long time, even before this trip. So I'm finally here. This is what the restaurant looks like and the waitress here is so nice. That's her. She's so, so, so nice. Let me tell you how it goes. She seems to really like this one. 
and my waitress. I'm gonna try this. Alright. This is another top rated croissant place. I'm just here after my COVID test, so let's go in. Good morning, guys. It is another day in Paris. I just took a shower. I actually had just gone outside to take my COVID test to get back into Canada. And basically, I also picked up some croissants on the way, as you guys saw. So I actually picked up a pain au chocolat because I said chocolate croissant and someone corrected me and was like, it's actually a pain au chocolat. But you know what? In Canada, we just called it a chocolate croissant, okay? So it's not my fault. It's my country's fault. And then the second one is I just got a regular croissant because yesterday they ran out of regular croissants. So I am going to try this out for you. This is another place I tried going to yesterday, but I was way too full. But yes, let me, let me just drink some water and then we're going to try out the croissant. Okay, let's try the regular croissant. As you guys can see, this is the type of packaging I was talking about. I don't love it, but you know, whatever. Oh my god. You guys don't even understand. Croissants in Paris are just so much fluffier and softer. I just cannot. Let's try the pain au chocolat, or as we American, North Americans call it, chocolate croissant. Oh my god. Why is it so good? Yesterday, I ended up shopping again all day. I did actually go to the Arc de Triomphe and I shopped through Champ Alize instead. I've been going to a bunch of different Chanel's because I was really trying to get the Chanel 19 Black Small, but it is sold out everywhere. I checked in Amsterdam. I checked already in like four boutiques in Chanel here and they're all sold out. I think they're going to get it in on Tuesday morning, but I leave Tuesday morning, so I don't think I'm going to get it. Also, I'm like kind of thankful because that would have been a very expensive purchase. Yeah, so thankfully uh, we are not getting the bag. I was also shopping because my mom wanted me to buy a wallet for her. And yesterday I also got to bike and scooter around the whole city. I think I'm going to do that again today. But this time today I'm actually going to go to some vintage shops. And then shop some vintage like clothing and stuff like that. So I will take you guys with me. I will probably not take the camera because I'm going to try to scooter. So I'll try to do everything on the phone. But I'm so excited to show you guys. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I have decided to ditch the croissant tour because basically I'm only here for three days and I, last time or the last few times, I was able to get so many people to help me eat the croissants. I didn't even realize it because I got the one croissant and I had to finish it all and I got so full already, then I had lunch. Yeah, I just feel like if I have like five croissants today, I'm literally gonna explode because I'm gonna have to eat all of them or waste the croissant, which I'm just like not someone who likes to waste food. My friend Quartermain actually suggested me to come to the Arc de Triomphe. I'm gonna just focus this there. So that's the Arc de Triomphe. Um, I have, like I said, I've been to Paris a couple times already. This is the fifth time, but this is the very first time the Arc de Triomphe looks like that. It is actually wrapped in some sort of like sustainable, I'm gonna leave it here because I, um, don't really know what the material is but this is the first time that this has happened and it's just so cool and basically what my alternate plan today is this is also the first time I've been to Paris where they've incorporated the public sharing um, vehicles so like bikes scooters etc so this is super exciting for me because of all the times I've been to Paris I haven't been able to scoot around bike around so you guys know from my vlogs just how much I love biking and scootering so I will be doing that so I can see Paris like as much of Paris as little time as possible and all in all this is why the croissant tour is um, ditched but anyway I'm gonna show you guys what Paris looks like right now from my point of view because it's absolutely crazy there are so many people I'm so happy I'm double vaccinated also if you're watching this video and you're an anti-vaxxer don't even bother going to Paris because literally everywhere you go whether it's a restaurant even coming to this exhibit it's outdoors but like you see this fence here in order to cross the fence you need to be doubly vaccinated so if you're not you just literally there's nothing for you to do in Paris except stay in your hotel but even then I don't even think you can stay in a hotel okay let me show you I don't think you guys understand how big this line is. It goes all the way to the end of this entire block. Oh my god. 
Hi everyone! So I'm back in my hotel now. I just finished the last day of being in Paris. I ended up going on the biggest shopping spree. This is so bad. But I got something else from Dior, which I'm excited to show you. I also got my very first Chanel bag. I did it. So as you guys know, I already got my very first Chanel product in Amsterdam and now I've got to my very first Chanel bag. So if you guys watch my designer handbag collection, which I'll leave up here, you guys will know that my first and dream Chanel bag is actually the Chanel 19 in black small. The reason why I like that a little bit more than the flap is because honestly, I just don't think that the classic flap is suited for my personality. I know what the flap looks like. It looks amazing. It's just, it's very rigid. And for me personally, I feel like it's not going to be as practical and also just kind of like hard to use. Even when I was like trying it on and like putting on and just like trying to put things in it, it just seems really rigid. I do think that I will probably get it one day. I also just don't think I'm gonna get it in black. So I know that's like super, I guess like very opposite from everyone else's mindset because I feel like everyone's mindset is like, if you're gonna get a Chanel bag, it's gonna be a classic flap that's black, that is probably in the size small or medium. You know, I feel like if I were to get that bag, it would be very a very out of my budget. That one, to give you guys context, and I got so many questions about this. That one, I will leave the price here, but I actually took pictures of the two prices. The cheaper one is a small, the more expensive one is a medium. If you do the conversion, that's like very much close to ten thousand dollars Canadian. So I got a lot of questions about, you know, whether or not it's actually more worth it to buy in Canada versus in. France, and I feel like the answer is actually it depends on the exchange rate basically like right now as I'm speaking the exchange rate is 1.5 so when you do a conversion like that it ends up being the same pretty much because someone actually screenshotted what the price is for the Chanel classic in Canada and if you convert it you know when there's a lesser exchange rate that's when it's going to be more worth it so that is actually very unique to Chanel because and maybe potentially this bag for example the Dior bag that I got there was a huge price discrepancy despite exchange rate in euros I paid 20 how do I not remember? 2,400 euros. And then in Canada, the bag is 4,800. So when you do the conversion, I'm already saving so much, even with 1.5. So it really depends on the bag. It really depends on the brand. You have to do your research. And at the end of the day, like you guys can actually do this research on your own because on every single designer website, you can change the location of the country. So you can do this before you decide to plan a whole trip to France to buy your designer bag only to find out it's going to be the same because you can actually just check the price online. Anyway, that's all I have to t say about that because I think it really depends on the bag and it depends on your exchange rate, etc. because I think every situation is going to be different. Anyway, that being said, the reason why I wanted the Chanel 19 black is because it's a lot more like flowy and it's more edgy. I feel like it's also just like more my personality. I don't know. Just because I'm like a very you know like not rigid person I don't really want a rigid bag that's like kind of hard to use I need to be able to like put things like and throw things in and out and then the other thing is that this bag in the black medium is not that hard to find this bag in the black small is impossible to find as you guys know, I tried looking for this bag in Amsterdam. Instead of getting the Caro bag, I actually was planning on getting the Chanel 19 Black Small. And I knew, I, even though I didn't really want to carry it with me throughout my whole trip, because A, I knew it wasn't going to match with any of my outfits because it's kind of like a little bit bigger and it's like, you know, because it's black, it's like not that summery. It was just like such an expensive item. I didn't really want it at the beginning of my trip. But because of how much I knew this bag was going to be so difficult to find and it's like so not it's not that it's so rare to come by it's more like the minute it's in stock someone buys it you just have to be either so lucky or you have to have like really good connections with your sales associate so that being said I knew like my first destination Amsterdam I had to try then the next two destinations in Ibiza and in uh, Sicily they didn't have a Chanel so I couldn't try there once I got to Paris I've been trying every single damn day and I went to like so many different Chanel boutiques all of them said they don't have it and they probably won't get it but then luckily enough I actually went into the Chanel boutique that's like 
perpendicular to Champs Elysees, and it's location number 51 if you guys are curious. So I actually went into that store, found the best lady ever, honestly. Like she was so sweet. The reason why I knew she was sweet is because I've been designer bag shopping for the last three days. And let me tell you, there were so many associates that were trying to push like different bags that just literally did not suit my needs. Like I would literally tell them exactly what I wanted. Like I wanted a very fluid bag, something practical, blah, blah, blah. Cause I was trying to find a backup bag in case I don't find the Chanel 19. Anyway. Some of these sales associate, particularly one in Louis Vuitton, she gave me the most limited edition Louis Vuitton. It was like this small ass bag and extremely rigid and it was snake skin or like something that looked or crocodile skin. I don't know what it was. And it was like a gradient color that was like basically yellow turned to orange turned to green. And it was just like the most un Lisa bag you could ever think of. And she was trying to sell it to me so hard. She's like, oh my God, it's so nice. Like you should totally get it. It's wonderful. And I'm just like, you clearly did not hear a word I said. I said a neutral bag which this is not and then this literally has four different colors on it the second thing was i wanted a bag that was easy to use this one had this like belt buckle on top of it and it was extremely rigid like i couldn't like i can't just like stretch it out i hate that as you can see i like my bags to be like softer i hate when they're like so rigid and it's so tiny like i know i will not be able to fit anything and i was literally just like yeah, exactly. I know because like a lot of sales associates, if I don't have the color I want or whatever, they'll try to push what they have in stock. Like even when I went to Dior, I tried to get a belt. I didn't get the size I wanted. She tried upselling me a different size. Anyway, same with like Louis Vuitton. They tried selling me different colors and I'm like, this is literally not what I asked for. Anyway. So the reason why I knew this girl was legit was because she, despite, I guess, like commissioner or whatever, she was like talking to me and she's like, hey, so like, um, I know you really want the Chanel 19. It's actually in a different store. You should totally go. Like you should go now, like to see if they have it. I grabbed her number anyway. And I was like, wow, the fact that she's pushing me to a different store instead of just trying to find me a similar bag is amazing. So I went to the other store. Obviously it, they didn't have the bag. I kind of just actually gave up and I was like, actually, this is probably good. Like I won't have to spend the money, blah, blah, blah. But then the next morning she texts me and she's like, hey, we got it in, I'll reserve it for you. And I was like, I'm not gonna be here until 4 p.m. Is that okay? And she's like, yep, that's fine. And once again, that's how I know she's like an amazing sales associate because another thing is like, well, first of all, I don't think they can take deposits anyway, but also like, I feel like typically when it's a high demand bag like this, they would probably be like, mm, sorry. Like they won't know for a fact that I'm gonna show up at 4 p.m. or not, especially if I didn't, you know, put a deposit down, but luckily I did show up. So I'm going to do the unboxing for you. I don't know, maybe I will do a review on the Chanel 19 as well after I've used it, but I'm going to do the unboxing for you and I will also unbox the Dior. Kind of spoiled what I got, but anyway, so here goes. Okay, so starting with Dior, this is now no longer my very first time with a Dior bag because as you guys know, I already bought a Dior bag earlier. This is not a bag, I mean Dior shopping bag. We all have already seen the store, it's super cute. Okay, so this is the little box that it comes in. It's just like the cutest little box. I actually used to be so sad whenever I buy any type of product, especially designer abroad, because I just feel like, oh my God, like this is such a cute box. Like I would totally love to keep this and just like leave it in my house and stuff like that. But now I have a completely new and different mentality because, you know, obviously like this box would be nice to keep because I'm manifesting that this is actually going to be a regular occurrence in my future life. I don't need to keep every single damn box. So therefore, I'm not gonna feel sad about this box because I'm gonna have many, many, many more to come. And that is why I'm not gonna feel sad about letting go such a nice, cute little box. So I'm gonna unbox it in front of you guys. It's so cute. I'm so excited to show you. Okay. Okay. So this is what I got. I got the Dior belt and this is, oh, the price tag is not on here, is it? No. 
So this was 490 euros and I really wanted this belt for a couple of reasons. I actually didn't take that much time to think about this one, but I know that it's going to be one of my most worn items this season. Number one, I do have a black belt, but it's like a cowboy style and I think it's also silver. I don't have a nice black belt. The other thing is that all the belts I have gotten, they've always been so long that like I just never know what to do with the flappy thing on the side. This one's also very neutral. I feel like I'm going to keep this for a very, very, very long time and I just really, really love the design of this. Another thing that I do which I actually suggest as well before you guys make any type of designer purchases is either depending on your need and depending on what you're looking for either YouTube it or search on Pinterest for outfits that kind of go along with it. For me, I didn't YouTube this one because I don't really think I needed to. When I make designer bag purchases, usually I will do this a little bit more, although I didn't do that for neither the Caro or the 19. If you really want the information, I also suggest going on YouTube and watching reviews and watching people talk about how they've used the bag, etc. And then that will really, really help you in buying your designer product. For me, um, in terms of this belt, all I did was I searched up on Pinterest Dior belt outfit. I looked at all the pictures of all the people that had styled it and I just really like it and I had my own ideas of how I'm gonna style it so I just feel like this one's going to be super practical and I just know it's gonna go with a lot of different outfits. This is one thing that I got. The next thing I'm gonna do Chanel. I just went to get the bag so I want to do a little unboxing although I feel like I have to really back up because this shopping bag is huge. Okay so here <laughs> oh my god, this is actually huge. Okay, so here's the Chanel purchase. If you look here, they have this really cute ribbon. As usual, I've actually kept these ribbons um, for like my hair or like whatever. Um, I have this one Instagram photo of me with this in my hair. Anyway, there we go. Put this in wrapping paper. Oh, this is my tax-free stuff. Oh my gosh, they gave me extra... Chanel shopping bags. So this is the first item. This is actually for my mom. This is not me. I only bought my bag. This is just, yeah, this was for my mom. And then this is the bag. Okay, so I am actually gonna start with the wallet because yeah, I just wanna show you guys the wallet. So as you guys know, this is the wallet that I got for myself when I was in Amsterdam. And as you guys know, if you guys have been following me on Instagram, on YouTube, this has been on my wish list for so damn long for practicality purposes because I just really, really wanted a wallet that opens up like this, very simple. Actually, I did find a couple of brands that do carry it. So Chanel, Dior, and Louis Vuitton all carry the same um, style of card holder. Don't like the actual card holders. I like this type of card holder. The Dior one is actually very nice and same with the Louis Vuitton one, but um, I actually didn't know that when I bought the Chanel, but I'm very happy with my decision. Anyway, so my mom came to me and she wanted a new wallet. She actually had her eyes set on this one from LV, but for the price comparison and the design that it was i'll try to look for it online to show you guys i just didn't think that it was worth like a thousand something dollars for the design and what it was i was like for a little bit more money you can get a really really nice chanel one let me unbox it for you so once again we have this flower here's the dust bag and here is the wallet. So this wallet, I'll just compare it to my card holder to show you guys. This is the size difference, um, but my, my mom's is actually a wallet wallet. So if I open it up, it's legitimately like there's, you know, a lot of compartments. You have the cards, you have this area here, um, and you have a coin holder. My mom's also a very practical woman. I, I guess this is where I got it from. For us, functionality is the utmost importance. Like we don't care what designer it is. At the end of the day, if it's not practical for us, like it's literally of no use to us because we're not one of those people that like, like to carry out bags just for nice occasions. I feel like we use our bags like all the time. And then at the very top, we have the bills section. So anyway, this purse, 
is just so 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 her and I just I'm so happy I was able to find this for her I also went to a couple different locations to find a suitable wallet and couldn't find one so I'm very glad we were able to find this Chanel one okay and now for my very first Chanel bag so once again this is the box gonna open it I'm, I'm gonna do it like this so we can open it together We've got this, I don't, oh, okay. This is to help you wipe down your bag. So if you open it, there's a little wipey thingy here. The dust bag, thank you very much. And voila, the actual bag, I'm so happy. I have looked everywhere for this bag. I cannot believe it is actually here. Okay, this is what it looks like. It is so soft. I'm so excited because I do know a couple of people that have this bag, whether in black or a different color, and everybody is in love with it. I think the biggest feedback that I got, and also from people who have the classic flap and this one, is that this one definitely fits more. It's a lot more practical and de people definitely use it more. I feel like if I do get the classic flap, it will be one of those bags that I will just take it out on a nice occasion type of thing. But you guys know I'm not like that, so I will be using this bag a freaking lot. So I'm just really excited to use this bag. Oh my god, she's beautiful. I'm actually going to take this off now because it's really bothering me. Yes, and then we've got the stuffing. Oh, also fun thing is that new Chanel bags, so not the wallet, the wallet still has the authentication card, but new Chanel bags, she was telling me there's no more authentication cards. There's actually just now this pin in the middle and it actually has like a serial number almost of the bag so no longer do we have to carry authentication cards which is like thank god because those authentication cards are really a hassle to carry around or like keep around but oh my god i'm so excited you guys are gonna see this so much this fall for me and there we have it